you know, what you've been through throughout yeah. your career as well, too. And um, everyone knows someone that has dealt with cancer. Yeah. And um, so you never think it's going to be you. Yeah. Until, you know, it is. And we right. know the seriousness of it. And uh, so tell us what was going through your head when, when you found out that you had cancer. And, you know, where were you at mentally? Uh, honestly, man, it, that shit was such a surprise. Like, you know, I'm coming off another Pro Bowl year. And, like, you know, physically, there is no, I didn't really feel a sign. I didn't feel any ailment. You know, I knew I had a, this this spot on my head that um, that I was told not to worry about. So I didn't worry about it. So, you know, so then getting, going from, going from up here to getting something like a cancer diagnosis. It was like, it was, it felt so unreal. It was really hard to have any emotions at that time. I felt like, you know, at that point I was just, I was just there. I was just living and breathing. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I didn't, I didn't really know where I was mentally. All I could think about was like my kids, like, like, damn, like, you know, how is this, how are they, how will they, be if I'm not here or like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's all I was really thinking about. I didn't even think about like dying in itself. I just thought about like the impact that they would have if that was to happen. Mm -hmm. So I, like, it just, it was such a blur, you know what I'm saying? And then got the diagnosis and then it just, every doctor visit, it kind of got worse and it got, you know, once they got more knowledge, because it was a very rare form of cancer. It wasn't anything that any doctor had, would deal with on a regular basis. So mm -hmm. going undiagnosed, to me, I wasn't like, I didn't, I wasn't mad about it because I just looked at it as a, you know, as a real human thing to overlook that. I overlooked it. I didn't think it, I would have never thought it was cancer. So mm -hmm. I wasn't angry about that or anything, you know. It was just like, uh, but to know that the lump I was feeling was cancer, I kind of knew in the back of my mind, like every visit they starting to learn more and more, they're gonna know, you know, how long it's been there. Cause I knew it had been there for some years. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just hoping that, that that time wouldn't, you know, make it worse. You know I'm thinking? Right. Hopefully it, it just, a, they said it was a slow moving type of mass. So, um, you were hoping, you were hoping like that. You didn't want to regret like not taking care of it and it had gone too, you know. Well, too I far. had already instantly regretted it because I knew, I knew that um, it just I thought about it way too much for it just to be, you know, a sis. Like I was like I just, I knew I knew I fucked up by just. I mean, I ain't gonna say that I ain't, I didn't have any regret because I did. I got it looked at several times. Mm -hmm. I just, I had regret because I knew, because I was starting, it was starting to set in. Like, damn, it's really been here five years. Like, now we're reading up on the cancer and how the tumor actually grows. Like, it doesn't grow in size. It's like roots, like like in a plant. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it has basically tentacles. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, like, now I'm starting to get more and more nervous, nervous about, yeah. like, damn, it's been there so long. It could have spread to my brain because mm -hmm. it's so close. And then like the fourth or fifth doctor visit, I actually I'm scheduled to get it removed on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. On Tuesday, they said, hey, we're gonna do a, like a quick MRI scan to kind of see, so we can uh, formulate the route of how we, you know, we're gonna remove the tumor and X, Y, and Z. So I'm like, cool, when did the MRI? Then Wednesday, I get a call like, it's like maybe two or three o'clock, you know, for a doctor's office to call. Mm -hmm. At that time, you know, it's kind of, you know, it wasn't normal. So they called and uh, they was like, hey, where you at? I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like maybe 45 minutes to an hour away, especially with traffic. They was like, we need you to come in. I'm like, damn, but it's gonna be a minute. Mm -hmm. I know y'all getting ready to close. And they was like, well, it don't matter. However long it takes you to get here, we're going to be here. So I was like, damn. That kind of made me feel a little uneasy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I stopped everything I was doing. I had to actually go to this one alone because my mom 
was uh, keeping the kids. Mm -hmm. So I had to go. And my mom, she a nurse, so she was with me at, at damn near every doctor visit, you know. So, uh, so I never really went in there alone. Um, so anyway, this one I had to go alone, uh, drive all the way out there. And uh, when I get there, obviously it's late. Doctor office is closed, you know, and it's just one nurse and the head doctor there. So I walk in, uh, sit down. The room already kind of dark because, you know, it's windows, but the sun going down. So, but I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm like, damn, the nurse kind of looked like she tearing up. Yeah. I'm like, damn, that's, I feel odd, you know, but she not really saying nothing. And then the doctor walk in and his eyes look heavy. So honestly, when I seen him like tearing up, I just really, I couldn't even look at him. I was just looking up into the corner of the room. They didn't want it to be real. Yeah, and it was like, he was like, man, I don't know how to say this, but, uh, you know, you might, uh, he was just like beating around, but I'm like, what is it? I can't play football no more. Just just put it on me. I'm already kind of anticipating, you know what I'm saying? I'm waiting. So he was like, no, nah, football, like the least of your words at this point. So when he said that, I just kind of like, oh, shit. And then I just braced myself, and he was like, yeah, man, uh, I think you need to like get closer to the girls, you know, stuff that really matter. Cause like from what I seen, um, I don't know how, uh, he's like, it looks pretty serious. I don't know how long you got left. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you bait, like you need to get your affairs in order. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn. So when he said that, like, I don't know. Like it was like, it was like an out of body experience. Like, <clears throat> it was almost like it just wasn't real. Like I'm just, like, I, I had a 45 minute hour drive to get home. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, like when I pulled up in the drive, I had no clue how yeah, I got, got there. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. Like I sat in the car for a minute. And then when I got home, I just went in my room. I didn't even say nothing to my mom and then like, I don't know, I just couldn't even like, I couldn't even really put this shit in words. You know what I'm saying? So. But then they flew me to a different doctor. And he was like, well, uh, we got new technology to where we can see a more in depth. Um, we can see, like, basically, you can, they can see, like, the cancer cells or something like that. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I got the scan, and they was like, well, we seen what the doctor seen. We, they showed me the scan that he looked at. And it was like, um, so it does. Like the cancer is like it, the the tumor is attached to your skull, but the cancer, what it looks like, well, on his scan, because it's like an old mm -hmm. older scan, it looked like it already metastasized. But he was like, we can see right here through the three D scan that it's attached, but it hadn't metastasized through. Mm -hmm. So shit, that was just basically like we got to get it done like right now, mm -hmm. or shit, it could be. We don't know when it's gonna do. It could be within the next hour. It can take a week, but we ain't really got enough time. So I basically had to, cause like my mom wanted me to get a second opinion, and uh, it was like we ain't got time to do that. So mm. shit, went on ahead, had to shave my head, and went on and got surgery like the next night. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then so so it happened fast. <clears throat> yeah, it kind of it the surgery part like after that scary diagnosis like it kind of happened fast after that like mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i was just in the hospital for maybe, probably like two weeks or so mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i want to send a huge shout out to verizon our new presenting sponsor third and long is now powered by verizon